So you want to get a Power Platform certification, huh? Certifications are a great way to prove your skills and boost your career. In this video, I'm going to walk you through all of the Power Platform certifications that are available to take today, give you some guidance around what order you might want to take them in, and some recommendations and tips and tricks on how to study. All of that coming up right after this. So first things first, where do we go to find out what certifications are available? To explore all of the Microsoft certifications that are out there, you're going to want to go to the docs.microsoft.com site and click on the Learn tab. From here, you'll see an option for certifications. Click on that and click the Browse Certifications option. As you can see, there are actually over 269 different certifications. To define the Power Platform specific ones, we can use the filter here on the left hand side and select the Power Platform option. This will narrow it down a bit. Now the first thing I want to point out here is there's a difference between certifications and exams. You have to take an exam to get a certification. So while there might be many different exams, there might be fewer certifications. So that's why we want to scroll down to the bottom here and select the certifications option under type. This way it'll filter it just by certifications, which will give us the certificate or badge showing that we've completed one or more exams to prove our skills in a particular area. For Power Platform right now, you see we have nine different certifications that we can achieve. New certifications and exams are added all the time, so by the time you watch this, there might be more. Fortunately, this site is going to have just about everything you need to know about these particular certifications and exams. So let's take a look at this Power Platform Fundamentals exam. First thing that you'll notice for all of these is it's going to give us an idea of the particular solution area this exam applies to. So this one here is Power Platform, but this next one, the Dynamics 365 Power Platform Solution Architect Expert is a Dynamics 365 forward type certification. Next, it's going to show us the target or typical audience for someone that might take this certification. For the fundamentals, it's geared towards our business users. This Dynamics one, though, is geared more towards solution architects. And finally, it's going to show us the level of difficulty for the exam. So the fundamentals being very foundational is going to be beginner, but something like an app maker associate would require some intermediate skills. And something like this dynamic cert would be more advanced. Now to get more details, you wanna click on the certification you're thinking about taking. And down below, if we scroll down under the certification details, this will tell you what exams are required to achieve the certification. So for this Power Platform Fundamentals, you only have to take one exam, the Microsoft Power Platform Fundamentals exam, and that will give you this certification. Next thing you'll wanna look at is the Skills Measured section. This is going to tell you the general areas that this particular exam or certification will cover. And up above in the description of this certification or exam, it's also going to tell you if there are any prerequisites required to complete this. So if it requires you to take another exam before you take this one, that'll be listed here. And it's going to show what job roles would typically be well suited for this particular certification or exam. Next thing I want to do is give you a general flow of how these certifications could go in order. Now, regardless of which area you focus on in the Power Platform, I recommend everyone starts with the Power Platform Fundamental Certification. The Fundamentals exam will test your foundational knowledge of the Power Platform as a whole. It's not going to go too technically deep into any of the Power Platform products. Instead, it's going to give you different scenarios and ask which Power Platform product would fit for this scenario. So if you know the basics about the Power Platform, that Power BI is used for reporting and dashboards, Power Automate for workflows, Power Apps for application development, and Power Virtual Agents for chatbots and intelligent agents, and you know which scenarios and business cases you would use each product, then you should be set for this certification. Now the next certification that I'm going to recommend after you get the fundamentals one out of the way is the Power Platform App Maker Associate. 
This one is an intermediate level exam that will build on top of that fundamental certification. This is just one exam required to get certification, and it's going to go more deeper into actually creating applications in the Power Platform. And again, this will touch on all of the different products. So you'll need to know a little bit about building chatbots and Power Virtual Agents, about building apps and Power Apps, visualizations and Power BI, and workflows and Power Automate. It will go into the specifics of what type of workflow in Power Automate do you need to use to run something on a schedule? Or what function would you use in Power Apps to store a variable? Things like that. The next certification that I would suggest you take after you take the fundamentals in the App Maker is the Power Platform Functional Consultant Certification. So it will cover everything from analyzing your business process and figuring out what tool to use to the particular functions and actions you need to take within the application to build your solution. Again, this only requires one exam to be taken, and this is another intermediate level certification. Where this one differs from the fundamentals in the App Maker certifications is instead of on the App Maker experience, this is more heavy on the administration and configuration side of things. Like the other exams, it's going to cover all of the different Power Platform products, but this is going to get more into the Dataverse and some of the security model and solutions and a lot of the integration between the different products. So the first three ones that I just covered, the Fundamentals, the App Maker, and the Functional Consultant, to me are pretty broad and a lot of different audiences could take those exams. The next couple are going to vary on your experience. So if you are a code first developer and you're doing a lot with say building PCF controls with the Power Apps component framework or custom connectors, then you might want to consider taking this Power Platform Developer Associate certification. This one will take everything that you would have done in the previous certifications and add more of the developer story to that. So it's going to really focus in a lot in the integration scenarios from a code first development perspective. You'll get into integrating Azure functions within your Power Platform solutions into custom connectors heavily, PCF controls, solutions, deploying your solutions, ALM, all of that very developer -y type stuff that you would expect. So if that's something that you're doing in your day to day, this would be a good certification for you. So, so far we have Fundamentals first, App Maker second, Functional Consultant third, and if you do some of the code first development in Power Platform, the Developer Associate. The next one I would have you consider is the Power Platform Solution Architect Expert Cert. Now this one actually isn't out yet at the time of this video. This should be released around March of 2021. Now, since this one isn't released yet, I don't have a lot of information to go off of here for this as far as exactly what it's going to cover. But given that it's a solution architect expert level exam, I would suspect this would get really in depth in the ins and outs of architecting out a solution. Everything from envisioning the solution and getting the business requirements to recommending the correct products to making sure you have your application lifecycle management story planned out, adding in the necessary integrations, all of that at a much deeper level than say the functional consultant the app maker and the fundamentals exams go over. Once this is released and I get some more details on it and take it myself, I'm happy to do a follow up video to this and kind of go over some of the things that this exam will cover. Now for this one, we mentioned all the ones we showed so far didn't have any prerequisites. The Power Platform Solution Architect Expert Search does have prerequisites. So to get this certification, you actually have to have either the Functional Consultant Certification already or the Power Platform Developer Associate Certification. So before you can even get this Architect Expert one, you have to have passed and achieved one of those certifications and you have to take the new Power Platform Solution Architect exam that's yet to be released. So this would kind of be the cream of the crop in the Power Platform certifications, I guess. Now I haven't mentioned the dynamics for the Power BI certs, and there's a reason for that. Let's take a look at the Power BI one first. So this one actually is retired. So it's still there on the certification website, but it's retired, meaning that you can't take this certification or exam anymore. 
So I would be keeping an eye out on this certification site to see if maybe they add another replacement Power BI related certification later on. And that's the same thing with this Dynamics 365 Power Platform Solution Architect. This one you can still take, but it's going to be retired in June of 2021, probably replaced with that exam we just looked at, the Power Platform Solution Architect one. Now that you have a good high level overview of all the Power Platform certifications available today and some recommendations on what order you should take them in, let's talk about how we can study and prepare for these exams. The first place I would suggest you go is to actually here on the Learn site, click on the certification that you're thinking about taking, scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a section on ways to prepare. For the fundamentals, for example, we have a learning path on the Microsoft Learn site to walk you through everything you need to know about Power Platform fundamentals for the exam. So if I open this up, you see that this will actually walk me through all the details of what Power Platform is, what Dataverse is, give me introductions to Power Apps and building Canvas apps, model-driven apps, portals, we'll do a Power Automate intro, talk about how to build automated solutions. We'll cover Power BI in this learning path and Power Virtual Agents. So really walking through this learned learning path will give you a lot of what you need to pass this certification. Now, of course, a big element of this is having the hands-on experience. But for the fundamentals, this is really about all you need. For the App Maker Associate, same thing if you click on that certification and scroll down, we have several different learning paths on the Learn site that are applicable to this certification. This is where you can tell that this one goes into much more depth. You'll cover a little more advanced topics in this one, like how to integrate AI Builder into your apps, some advanced Power Apps techniques and governance, things like that. Everything that you would kind of need to know, again, in these learning paths. But for this exam especially, that hands-on experience is a must-have. I really recommend that you click on the certification and go through all of the learning paths in the Microsoft Learn material that it recommends. The combination of that and just getting hands-on experience running through some of the labs that are in there, because some of these learning paths have labs that you can walk through in different scenarios, which is really good to reinforce what you learned and your skills. Also, YouTube, you're watching this on YouTube right now. There's so many videos from other great people in the community on how to do certain things. So as you go through the learn material here and highlight some specific topic, like maybe the AI builder piece, and you wanna dive deeper into that piece of the Power Platform, just do a search on YouTube for Power Platform AI Builder and watch some videos of how other people are using AI Builder in their Power Platform solutions and get some ideas and experience and information there. And just a couple more study resources. If you do prefer the instructor-led training, just click this instructor-led option here, and you can search for a learning partner that can take you through some certification exam material and have a more guided learning type experience. There are some other great training sites out there with Power Platform topics and even certification resources. So one is Udacity. There's a Power Platform course out there built by Microsoft that's really good to give you some more information on the fundamentals of Power Platform. LinkedIn Learning has a lot of great stuff. And Pluralsight as well, if you happen to already have a subscription, I know they have a Power Platform Fundamentals Search learning path on there to walk you through some of that. That's all that I have for you today. I hope that I've given you a good overview of the Power Platform certifications and gave you a plan to get started. I want to hear if this helped you pass one of these certifications. So if it did, please tweet me on Twitter at April Dunham, and I want to hear and celebrate your wins with Power Platform certifications. If you found this helpful, please like, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next video.